order to pick the ignition, we will have to use normally the A1 pick, unless you have all of the tools that I'm showing you right now. And if you have this, you're not gonna need the A1 pick tools in order to do it. We need a vice grip, WD-40. We need a straight pick, okay, straight pick. You can also use a small Allen wrench instead. We need a ratchet with an extension tool and the tip of the ratchet need to be 532, okay, 532nd. Okay, that's the tip of the key. We need this uh, star screw, okay, this star screw and a plier and a flathead screwdriver. Okay, these are the tools that we need in order to complete this uh, process. And now I'm gonna show you how to pick the ignition and I'm gonna show you how to do it step by step. All right, so uh, basically for this video, I'm sitting inside 2013 GMC Yukon Denali um, that have a 10 cut ignition. Basically the code, in order to make a key, we need to find the code first and the code sits on top of the ignition. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to pick the ignition without the A1 pick tools, and I'm gonna to show you how to do it step by step. All right, so what we need to do first, we need to take this uh, plier and the pick tools. It's just a regular pick tools that you can pick a house. By the way, you can also use a paper clip if you choose to. It doesn't have to be this, it can be a paper clip, can be a, a needle, as long as it have like, you can bend it a little bit. Okay, you see? You can bend it a little bit, okay? As long as you can do that, um, that's what you will need. So basically what we need to do, the pick tools come straight. So what do we need to do? We need to take the cutter of the plier, okay, the cutter of the plier, and we need to cut just the tip of it. Cut the tip of it. There you go. I just cut the tip of it. And what we need to do now is to bend it just a little bit. Look what I'm doing. I'm bent it just a little bit. Okay, I want it to have like some kind of an L shape. Okay, there you have. Okay, something like this, gonna be good. Okay, so again, I cut the tip of it and then I bent it to an L shape. Okay, an L shape. Then I take the plier and I put it on the side. Now, very important to know that in order to reach to the ignition, what we need, they, they, we have the steering column and then we have the neck of the steering column. The neck of the steering column have two parts. We have the bottom part, the bottom plastic, and then we have the top plastic. And then we have the ignition. Now we need to disconnect the bottom part from the top part. So what do we need to do? We take this, this star screw, okay? The star screw and underneath, underneath the bottom piece, we have two holes. We have two holes that have um, um, star screws. So what we need to do best is gonna be to lift, to tilt the steering column all the way up. So we're gonna have more space to work from the bottom. And right here and right here, you're gonna be able to see a star screws. Now, not all the time you will have these screws. In many of the vehicle, you're not gonna have the screws and that's okay. But if you have them, you will have to remove it because the, stru the screws connect the top and the bottom piece pieces. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna disconnect. I'm gonna remove the star screws. Here's the first one. Just come outside the second screw. So when you put it, put it on the side. Then what we need to do is take the flathead screwdriver and we wanna create a separation between the top, the bottom piece and the top piece. And the way that we do it, we put this, the screwdriver in between the top and the bottom and we just create a small separation, just like that. Okay, and then I go to the other side and I make sure that this, there is some kind of a separation between them. Okay, now what we need to do, a lot of time in many vehicles, you're gonna be, you're gonna be able to lift this part immediately up the top piece you're going to be able to lift it up but in many many of the vehicles like this one this piece is connected with a screw from the bottom so i'm going to show you exactly how to find it okay so basically we're going to lift it up all the way and i'm going to remove the bottom piece now this one in order to tilt the steering column up and down up and down is electric with a wire. So 
be careful not to remove it. Now in some vehicle, it's not gonna be with electric wire like here, but in this vehicle, we have the electric wire. So be careful not to, not to tear it apart. Okay, so what you wanna do, you wanna remove the bottom piece, like I just did, okay? Now, why, why we cannot take it out? Because we have a screw that catch this piece inside. Okay, the screw is located at the bottom and it catch this top uh, piece. Now in some vehicle, you will not gonna have this, that screw and you're gonna be able to take this out. But in this vehicle, you do have that screw. So what we need to do, we need to remove the screw. Okay, how do we do it? First of all, I wanna show you the screw, where it's located. Okay, so basically, if you're gonna look here, you're gonna be able to see the screw is right there. Okay, I'm pointing at this black screw right here. Okay, this screw, the one that catch the top piece in place. I'm gonna make a bit close up. I'm gonna close it up. Okay, hopefully you can see it now. Okay. Okay, so basically the screw I'm talking about is this screw. Is this screw. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to take the ratchet, okay, and we need to screw it out. Okay, this is like a female screw. A female, the screw is like a male, so we need to put it and screw it out. So, I'm just gonna put my ratchet right here. Just like that. And make sure I can catch the screw. So it's not so easy to see because of the because of the the ratchet. The screw is just behind it. So let me see if you guys can see it from here maybe. And what you want to do is just screw this screw out. Just show, slowly but surely screw it out. But hopefully you can see a bit what I'm doing. Okay, so once I, I feel that I took it off, I can just take the screw and there you go. I just removed the screw. Okay, there it is. Wait a minute. There it is. Okay, here's the screw. Okay, so what I did with the ratchet, I just, I was just taking it like that and I just screw it out. Okay, just like that. Okay, so it's it like that. Okay, just like that. Okay, so now when it out, I put it on the side. Okay, and now there is nothing that holds the top piece in place. So what I can do, I can just tilt the, tilt the stain column a bit down and we can remove the top piece. Okay, now in some cases, I wanna let you know, in some cases, you may have another screw at the other side, at the left side of the stain column. It's gonna be exactly the same screw as this one. Exactly the same screw, so it's gonna be on the left side. Okay, so you will have to make sure that to release the top piece. Okay, so after I remove the top, the screw that catch it in place, now the top piece comes out easily. Hi, I'm Moshe. I'm sorry to interrupt your video. I know it's a pain in the ass, but look, I want to tell you something important. I can tell that you're really interested in learning about how to program car keys and remotes. Well, that's what we do in Luxnet videos online. So this YouTube channel is just a small fraction of what we actually do. You should really visit our website at luxnetvideosonline.com. There, you could find hundreds of videos and tutorials that will show you step by step how to program all kinds of car keys and remotes. From transponder keys, to remote head keys, to smart keys for vehicles that have a push to start system and much much more when it comes to the Luxnet field in general and the automotive field. So if you click on the link below this video or go to luxnetvideosonline.com you can have access to all of the knowledge that I acquired throughout my 15 years Luxnet career and you can become as professional as I am on your first day and on your first try. Yes I just said it you can become as professional as I am on your first day and on your first try. I don't think you can afford to be without it. Okay so basically right now the top piece came out and what we need to do now we need to remove the cap 
of the ignition. We need to remove the cap. And how do we do it? Okay, I position the camera uh, above the ignition. So we have the cap of the ignition. And this is the ignition after we remove all of the plastics. And what we need to do now is to remove that cover. This is, a, this is the cap, the cover of the ignition. It's, it's called the cap, it's a plastic cap. And what we need to do, we need to remove it. The best way to remove it is to use the flathead screwdriver. Okay, and what we need to do to take the flathead screwdriver, we need to put it in between here, okay? And we can see the plastic right here that is sit on top of the ignition, the head of the ignition. So what we need to do, we just need to put the screwdriver right here and we need to bend it a little bit, just, just like that. Boom, to take the plastic a bit out. Okay, so let's do it. Just like just like this, a bit here, and then you can put you can position it in a different place and do something like that step by step, don't be in a rush, just make it good. One moment. Again, put the plastic, the screwdriver. And try to create a separation between the plastic cup and the head of the ignition. So it's giving me a bit of hard time because of the angles, but one moment. Okay, watch what I'm doing. I'm just position the screwdriver here and I'm trying to create a separation between the plastic. There you go. It's just starting to come outside. You see how it starts to come outside? That's what we want. So we can turn the screwdriver and go to, and just, you can hold it, whatever you manage to take out and go to a different place and just there you go there you go it start to come outside and you can hold it and go here and it will come out any moment there you go i just took it out okay just took it out and now it's in my hand okay that's what i wanted to achieve okay to remove the cup out and in order to do it what I did, I, I put the screw here, right here, and bam, I pushed the plastic out, out, out. And now the cup is in my hand. Okay, so basically the cup is just a plastic that sits in pressure on top of the ignition. Okay, so we took it out. Now that we took it out, put it outside. Now we have the ignition basically uh, in front of us after we remove all of the covers and now the goal is to pick the ignition okay i just position in the, the camera in a, a angle that you can see it a bit better so basically what we need to do now we need to pick this ignition lock cylinder so how do we do it what is the best way to do it first of all what we want to do we want to take the vice grip and we want to catch the ignition not like this Okay, not like this, but like that. Okay, and you want to make sure that you close out it on the ignition. Not, don't kill the ignition. Don't tight it so much. Just open the vice grip, put it on top of the ignition, and then close it. And then close it a bit more. So when you put it on top of the ignition, it lock on the ignition. But And then you can move the ignition, okay? But... You don't want to over tight it. You don't want to over tight it. Otherwise you can break the ignition, but just enough so you can catch the ignition without your hand. Okay, so you want to prepare it. So it's going to have the right size of the ignition before you start. Okay. Next, what we want to do, we want to take WD-40 and we want to put it on inside, a bit inside the hole of the key, the keyhole. And a bit here. Oh, there you go. So now we lubricate the ignition a little bit with WD-40. It will help us to pick the ignition. 
Then what we need to do now is to pick the ignition. And how do we do it? We need to put pressure on the sidebar. Now you're probably asking where is the sidebar? So the sidebar located, let's say for example, this hole, this whole thing is a clock. Okay, it's a clock. And the top of it, one moment, this is between 12 and six. So here it's 12, at the bottom is six, this is three, and this is uh, um, nine. Okay, so the sidebar is behind nine, is behind this, right here at the bottom, is right behind th this, is inside the small hole. Okay, it's not so easy to see, I know, but this is the best way that I can show you. Okay, the sidebar is right here, underneath, that's it. I'm, I'm moving it right now. I'm pressing it right now. So basically, we, when we wanted to pick the ignition, what we did, we positioned this uh, uh, pick tools inside here and we put it on top of the sidebar and what we did we maintained the pressure towards the cylinder so we try to maintain a pressure on the sidebar inside the cylinder okay right here okay that's where we position the 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 pick tool the tension tool okay and then at the same time we took the pick and then we try to manipulate the wafers trying uh, to make the cylinder think that the actually key is inside and when the sidebar because we pressure on, we, we make we put pressure on the sidebar when the sidebar went in then we could twist the cylinder to the on position okay uh, actually make the cylinder think that the actually key inside and then we could twist the cylinder and that's the reason why we put pressure on the sidebar we wanted the sidebar to go in and at the same time we twist it using the vice grip to the on position and what you want to do, you want to take the the, um, the pick tool and what we want to do, you want to put it, just slide it under, just like that, inside a small hole, inside a small hole. And if you can see, it's not so easy, I know it's not so easy to see, but you're going to be able to see right here the sidebar, right here. Okay, I'm pressing on it right now. So what we want to do, we want to... A, a put a pressure with the pick tools on the sidebar. In one moment, I'm gonna bring another pick tool. Okay. I just brought another pick tools. That's just a regular house pick tool. Okay, just a regular one. Just a regular one. And by the way, you can do it with a paper clip if you choose to, both paper clip. It's, it's also gonna be okay, but I recommend at least a pick tool. So basically, again, we position this, this um, a pick tool inside, right here, inside the, the sidebar, inside the hole of the sidebar, just like that. And what we wanna do, we wanna put pressure with this up okay up okay towards the cylinder okay so what we do we do that and at the same time we're gonna start to pick to manipulate the wafers inside the ignition now the position of the of the pick tool should be like this not not like that not up but kind of down so like that down like that okay because the wafers are located at the bottom Okay, so what we want to do, we want to press with our thumb towards the ignition, towards the ignition. We want to push the sidebar inside. Okay, and pick, and at the same time, we want to start to manipulate the wafers in the ignition. Now, once we feel that we did enough, okay, and remember, you, you always want to maintain the pressure of this towards the ignition inside, okay? So, you wanna manipulate the wafers, and when you feel, you're gonna be able to feel that the sidebar went inside. You never wanna release the pressure from here. We wanna press it inside with our thumb, just like that, just like that, and manipulate the wafers. Now, once we feel we did enough, a few seconds, it should be okay. We take the vice grip that, remember, we prepared the vice grip a bit before, 
and we catch it like here. Don't release the pressure from this and try to turn the, the ignition. Try to turn the ignition. Not always it's gonna be easy. And if you feel that it's a bit hard, don't, uh, don't uh, force it because then we can break the head of the ignition. So release it. And I guess we didn't pick the ignition yet. So what we need to do is just do it again. Just do it again. Okay, put the, the pick tool, maintain the pressure with your thumb, with your thumb up, up towards the ignition and start to manipulate the wafer. Manipulate the wafer, manipulate the wafer. And then take the vice grip, put it. If it went open, just close it a bit. And just like that. There you go. There you go. I just twist it. Okay, I just twist it. You can see the light a bit comes on. So basically when we twist it, be careful not to twist it back by mistake. Because if you twist it back, it will lock again. It will lock in place. So what do we need to do now? What we need to do is remove, remove this. Remove the pick tool out. Oh, we don't need it anymore. Okay. And what we want to do, we want to twist the ignition to the on position. And as you can see, it did, does twist. It does twist. Okay, to the on position. Okay, now that we did it, okay, we can see that the ignition is in the on position. One moment. Okay, you can see the light on the dashboard just came on. One moment, I will just turn off the lightning. Okay, and basically now the ignition is in the on position. Okay, what, so what do we need to do next? Next, what we need to do is make sure that you press on the, on the emergency brake. Use your emergency brake, press it all the way with your left leg. And what do we wanna do? You wanna press on the brake and we wanna put, take the stick shift and put it in neutral while maintaining the leg on the brakes. We don't want the car go uh, suddenly slide on us. Okay, just maintain it on the brakes because right now we put it on neutral. Remember, from park to neutral. And now we can do it because we picked the ignition already. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna position the camera from above the ignition so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so basically I just positioned the camera in an angle that you can see good what I'm doing. So basically right now that we twist it to the on position and we put the stick shift from parking to neutral, to neutral, remember, it, uh, after we pick the ignition, basically what we need to do is to take this pick. Okay, you can also use an Allen key, anything that will go inside this button. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna tilt the steering column down so we, we can see it a bit better. I'm just gonna tilt it down. Okay, so we can see it from above. We can see a bit better. Okay, so what do we need to do? We're gonna have a look at this hole right here. Okay, we have a hole. Okay, and what do we need to do? We need to use the vice grip, hold the vice grip, hold the cylinder and twist it all the way. Okay, now we need to twist it all the way to the, uh, uh, to the position where we normally start the engine. Okay, all the way. And then we need to take the pick tools or the Allen key, whatever goes in and press. Press on a pin and at the same time, pull the cylinder out towards the outside. Pull the cylinder out. There you go, you can see that the cylinder come out and there you have it. Now the cylinder in my hand, okay? And what we did, please have a look at this pin, okay? This pin, one moment, is what we press through the hole. When we put the pick in the hole, we just press on that pin. We press it down and at the same time we pull the ignition outside, okay? Okay, so we press on this pin down. We press on this pin down. And that way we could take it out, we could take it out. Okay, so now when we have the cylinder in our hand, now we're gonna go and uh, take a look where is the key code, and then we're gonna be able to cut the key. So I'm gonna go now to my car. Before that, make sure you put the car back in parking and make sure that the Emergency brakes is also on because right now the car is in on position. So now I'm gonna go to the car and we're gonna find out the key code. Okay, 
So we are right here in the car. After you pick the ignition, you can take the ignition in the car. And as you can see, it got some um, um, oil on it and it is a bit, uh, it is a bit uh, messy. So what you wanna do? We wanna clean it with a paper towel. Okay, so now when we clean the cylinder, what we need to look for is the key code. So basically, um, right now we can see here the key code. There are three key codes we have right here at the top, we have in the middle, and we have at the bottom. The key code that we care about, the key key code, is the one at the top. Okay, the one at the top. Now it's not so always so easy to see and so easy to understand. In some vehicles it's much easier than others. Okay, for example, this is not so clear. Uh, we can see that the first, uh, we have like one, two, three, four, and five. So basically one, two, three, four, and five uh, 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 letters or number in the key code. The first one is a letter. And the first one is the letter G. Then we have this one, this one, this one, and this one. So the last, the last three is nine, three, and zero. Okay, so G, and this is, look to me like it can be either eight, or zero, so G, zero, nine, three, zero. Now, um, it could be also eight, I'm not gonna say that I know for sure, and what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to put it in the machine and try both of the option and see if it's eight or if it's zero, but this is definitely G, this is nine, this is three, and this is zero, and that could be either eight or zero. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna cut the key, and uh, we don't know for sure, so we're gonna try uh, a zero first, and if not, we're gonna try it as eight. So the code right now, as I see it, is G0930. Okay, zero is like a, a round with a line inside, okay? So G0930. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna cut the key. All right, we're right here at the cylinder after we cut the key. So uh, there you have it. Now we're gonna test if the key is actually fit inside the, the cylinder. So basically let's put it in. Okay, and uh, it looks like this is the perfect key. And um, the way that I know it is that uh, I want you to see. This, of course, is the keyhole right here. This is the keyhole. Right here are the wafers. Okay, here's the key code, which of course is right here. And this is the sidebar, okay? And now I'm gonna show you from this side. So basically we have the sidebar. And if you're gonna look at this angle, the sidebar is stick a bit outside of the cylinder. It's not in the same exact line of the cylinder. You see how it sticks out? It's not flush with the cylinder, it sticks out, okay? We can see it also here, it sticks out. When we put the right key in, the correct key, what happens is that the sidebar, the sidebar will go in and will be flush with the cylinder. So let me put the correct key inside. Okay, I'm gonna put it inside, boom. And you see how it just uh, came down and right now it's flush with the cylinder. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it out a bit. And you see how it comes outside? When I put it in, boom, it just go inside. Out, in, out, in, again. When I put the key all the way in, you see how it goes in when the key is all the way inside? All the way inside, sidebar goes in and then we can twist the ignition to the on position. Okay, I'm gonna show it to you down. When it's upside down, sidebar is out. I put the key all the way. Goes in. Out, in. Out, in. When it's out, we cannot turn the cylinder. When it's in, we can turn the cylinder and start the engine. So basically, now we're gonna put the cylinder back in place. Okay? So let's do it. All right, we just came back to the vehicle after uh, I cut the key. So basically, one moment, right now, uh, 
Yeah. Basically, right now uh, I just cut the key. The correct key is inside the cylinder, and what we want to do, we just need to put it back in place. Okay, the way that we want to put it in is if we see right here, we have a round cylinder, and right here we have a small uh, groove opening. And what we want to do, we want to put this piece inside that opening all the way in until we cannot log and do it. So we put it in just like that, just like that. Okay, just like that, all the way until it doesn't go in anymore. And then we can twist it to the off position. Okay, on and off. Now we have the key, remember. So now we don't need to pick it. We have the key to twist it to the on position and to the off position. Okay, so basically, right now after we did that, what we need to do, one moment, is to put everything back together. So now we have the key that we can program. Of course, it's not going to start the engine yet because it's not programmed yet. But what I'm going to do, right now we have to put back everything back together. So I will take the key out. And what we, did, we need to do now is to put the cover. Remember, we need to put the cup on top of the uh, cylinder. Now, the way that we put it is just clip in. We just need to clip it in. So it can be either like that or it can be like that. So you will have to see in your car how it needs to sit in perfectly. So the hole, the hole of this will sit against the keyhole of the plastic, will sit against the keyhole of the uh, ignition. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to test it. And there you go. This is how it needs to be here. And what I'm going to do, I just put a pressure on it with my thumb. One, two, and there you go. One here, two here, and then I just clip it in. Okay, I just clip it in. Next, what we need to do is put the top piece of the, the top cover. Okay, so what we need to do is to tilt the steering column down. Okay, and what we want to do is to put the top cover. Okay, so I take the top cover and I will slide it all the way in, just like that. And make sure that this part, okay, go inside the plastic. Okay? This need to be very this could be very tricky but we want to put the this side first in deep deep inside and we want to make sure to take the plastic the the this and put it right around that okay first then we can put it safely on top of this okay now what we need to do we need to put back remember that screw from before Remember this screw, this screw with the ratchet, okay, with the ratchet, we need to put it and catch this piece. Now, not always you will have to do it. You will, you will choose if to do it or not, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you and normally I put it back. If it used to be uh, there before, I'm going to put it back. So what you want to do, you want to tilt the steering column up. So we're going to have a lot of room to uh, work from the bottom. So what we want to do. We want to take the we want to take the screw put it inside the ratchet and we want to screw it in one moment it just moved we want to screw it in just put it just like that and then i press with my hand here to give it some contra and start to screw it in There you go. So basically right now, the top piece is, is, a, is a catch. And what I'm gonna do, now we need to put the bottom piece back together. Okay, so basically what we do now, we're just gonna put this part back in. The best way to do it is to put this, this side first in. Put the inside first. Okay, this could be tricky if you not do it uh, the right way. So put the inside first. Put the inside first, behind this uh, stick shift rubber. Okay, put it behind the stick shift rubber until it sits just about that nicely. And then you want that this will sit inside the rubber, the stick shift rubber, before you clip it in. So, put it just like that. Okay, make sure you position it nicely from this side and from the other side. 
And right now, when you feel that it's nicely, you need to clip it in. Just clip it in. Okay, everything sit nice. Clip it in from this side and then go to the other side and clip it in from the other side. Now that we did it, we want to tilt it up. And the last thing that we need is to put back these two star screw star screws so remember where they were we had one right here now not on all of the cars you will have this star screw but in, if you have it then just put it back and there you go i just put it back all right right now we put everything back together and we do have the key so if you want to put the key inside twist it to the own position you can see that basically all the lights came on basically right now we have the key of course the key will not gonna start the engine yet it will not because the key is not yet programmed so what we're gonna have to do now is to program the key and then we're gonna be able to start uh, the engine so basically right now just gonna program the key and uh, you will have to do it too for the engine to be started so I'm gonna be back in a second with you after I program that key all right so I'm right back here after I program the key and basically, after we did everything, the key is programmed. We can put the key inside the ignition, twist it to the on position. And there you have it. The uh, key is programmed and the engine started. And basically, this is the process of making a key for a GM vehicle such as this one. Basically, this video, I show you how to pick the ignition, how to find the key code in the ignition without the A1 pick tools. And basically after we do that we can go ahead to the next step which will be to program the key and then there you have it you want to know how to program car keys and remotes for all type of vehicles and easily well if you do then i have the perfect solution for you hi my name is moshe and i'm the owner of a locksmith company for over 10 years i'm an expert when it comes to program car keys and remotes i created a website full of videos and tutorials that will guide you step by step how to program all kind of car keys and remotes by using this website you will be able to program all kind of car keys from your first day and from your first try from transponder keys to remote head keys to smart keys for for vehicles that have a push to start system. All you will have to do is just go to the search bar and type the make here and model of the car that you would like to program the key for. Then choose the correct video from the suggested videos and follow the video step by step. It's that easy. And if you would like to order the exact same key that is being explained in the video, no problem. Just press on the link at the bottom of the description and you can order the exact same key that is being explained in the video. It's that easy. Go to www.laxnitvideosonline.com and see it for yourself.